Welcome back. You are watching Notepad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. Joining me over across uh, Kuala Lumpur is Alex Chai. He is the head of uh, the regional um, equities research at RHB Investment. We're talking about the latest uh, book that the company, that the bank has uh, issued, which is called the RHB Top 20, listing down the top 20 small and mid-cap companies that they find interesting for investors to look at. Um, of course, none of this constitutes to, uh, you know, uh, the recommendation to buy or sell. This is just to make your investors aware of the situation right now. And perhaps if you are interested, you can dig deep or uh, deeper into these kind of investments. Um, Alex, uh, let's talk a little bit before. We jump to the real, the crux of the whole thing um, of who or what these 20 companies are. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the psychology of investor when they want to look into, say, investing into small and mid-cap companies versus uh, some of the IBM 70 or the IBM KLCI. What would be some of the key things that they need to look out for when it comes to investing in small and mid-cap companies? Okay, I think uh, what, um, you know, I think uh, generally investors have seen small cap stocks as one of the avenues. Uh, for for them to add to the alpha to you know to the re, to the absolute return of their fund uh, to beat the index because I think um, if everybody is just partly putting their money in uh, in the large caps uh, then generally the large caps uh, by and large tend to to track the the, the benchmark FBM KLCI uh, which is a combination of the top 30 companies uh, in Malaysia uh, so I think um, you know small cap stocks also offer a greater uh, Share price volatility, uh, which traders like, um, so that uh, you know, the, and any swings that that occur uh, can be big swings, uh, as opposed to uh, baby steps or baby swings um, that generally the the, the um, you know uh, bigger cap companies uh, tend to 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 demonstrate. Yeah, I want to pull up this particular chart that you guys have in your book. It's it's called the uh, regional equity market valuation gap of big and small caps. Um, while I see some variations here, uh, market to market, um, Malaysia is actually quite neck and neck, um, you know, as opposed to, for instance, Singapore, where uh, the small cap index actually outperforming the benchmark index, um, and Philippines the other way around, Indonesia the other way around. Uh, what does this tell us a little bit about Malaysia, um, benchmark index and um, MSCI small cap index actually quite neck and neck when we talk about the one year forward PE comparison? Okay, I think if you look at the 2019 performance um, of the Malaysian small cap names, uh, you will find that in 2019, it was an excellent year for the small cap uh, sector, uh, which, uh, you know, the performance, um, you know, outstripped the FM KLCI by, by several multitudes, um, you know, up uh, 24, 25% on the year when the CI was actually down year on year. Um, you know, so I think um, the, the, there were, the, it came a point um, you know, when we reached uh, end 2019, that valuations for the small cap index had actually um, uh, was it was pretty much at par uh, with the large cap, uh, you know, index, which uh, sort of told us uh, told us one thing at that time that um, you know the the small cap names were already fairly fully valued, quite fully valued. But of course, um, you know, given the the, the circumstances uh, in 2020. When you've seen a significant pullback in the in the market, um, you know the, the 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 small cap index has obviously uh, pulled back uh, to a much greater degree than the, the large cap CI, uh, and therefore the valuations have also pulled back uh, to a, a to a to a situation where a lot of small caps are now trading at a discount to the big caps, uh, and so with that pullback, um, small caps now begin to offer. Uh, more value again. And if you look at um, the way the market has reacted, uh, we reached a low uh, for the FBM KLCI on March the 19th, uh, when the CI touched 1219. But since then, uh, the big cap index has rebounded, what, 14, 15% uh, to where it is right now, um, you know, 1390 uh, on the CI. Um, whereas the, the, the FBM KS small cap index uh, hasn't uh, bounced back uh, by as much. Uh, and hence, um, you know, given that uh, that uh, small cap in uh, stocks now uh, trade at a discount again, um, and they now they obviously haven't um, bounced back as much as the large caps have, 
um, you know, then uh, we are beginning to see a greater value in this in a small space. Um, you know, given that um, you know right now where the the markets are, um, you know, the markets are trying to look forward to try and price in the post COVID nineteen uh, pandemic recovery. Uh, but of course, uh, pending further clarification on how uh, well contained uh, COVID-19 is going to be, uh, not just in Malaysia, but the world over. Um, I think at this juncture where the, the large caps are, um, I think there's only uh, so much upside left in the in the CI, at least in the, in the near term. Uh, and hence, right now, uh, it's very much a trading market uh, for investors, um, you know, for punters. Um, who, who have come in? If you look at yesterday's trading volume, it was an all-time, uh, all-time record, um, yeah. and so, so that that really gravitates uh, investor interest more towards the the high beta, uh, small cap names, uh, which, which which is what we've been seeing uh, over the last few weeks. I, you know what was interesting also was that in the annual report of uh, the presentation of annual report of PNB, both Tan Sri Zeti and also Jalil was talking about the uh, worry that uh, the large cap might not be bringing in the kind of income uh, that they expected um, uh, for this year and therefore it's going to hit an impact towards all the dividend income uh, for these kind of large cap but the same can't be said about the small cap because you know as you're saying you're saying it's not they're not as you know as as in the same uh, boat or predicament as the large caps do uh, because of this do you think that uh, now is a good time for us to really look at um, you know, small cap, you know, for a person like me, I just, you know, I'm a lazy guy. I go long term. I just put my money there and hopefully, you know, it works out in the end. I'm not into this whole, you know, you, you look at stocks every day. I don't, right? But perhaps now is the time for me to look, look for value. Now is the time for me to really study the mid cap and small cap a little bit more or a little bit more diligently and perhaps made a decision better on that. Okay, I would say this at the outset. Um, small cap stocks have... Uh, volatility uh, and hence uh, maybe it's not uh, for the passive investor um, people don't buy small caps for yield uh, sure there may be some some small cap names who offer reasonable yield but really uh, people buy the small cap names for the capital gain uh, as opposed to the yield um, you know I would say that um, you know for for people to 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 delve into small cap names uh, they need to be more involved in the market uh, they need to be educated and they need to, um, you know, be, be be actively involved in the market as opposed to, you know, being a passive investor where you just want to put your name in there and, you know, you sleep soundly at night. Um, you know, really, uh, you know, for, 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 for the small caps are more for the knowledgeable and for the more active investors in the market. Okay, that's fantastic advice. I really want to get that out um, uh, there in the public because people think that, you know, they want to go for yield, they go into small caps and I don't think that's a good thinking. Um, Alex, we'll take a short break before we jump into the, you know, perhaps naming some of the top 20 that you have in your book. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. 